In this Adobe Photoshop tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I edited a series of photos that I shot in my own living room from this into this. First thing we need to do is set up the new document. I'm gonna set up a four x five image format for Instagram with a width of 2160 pixels and a height of 2700 pixels. I'm gonna leave everything else as it is, but I do like to start with a transparent background and then click create. Okay, so now that we have our document ready, let's bring in our images and get cracking. I'll make sure that they're positioned correctly and then I'll press enter to add them in. As you can see, the images appear over here in the layers tab. I'm very quickly gonna swap the layers around as I want my foreground image as the top layer and my background image as the bottom layer. These are the first two layers I'm gonna work with, so I'm just going to hide the rest of the layers that I'm not working with at this moment. So with the top layer selected, the first thing that I'm gonna do is remove the background from inside this frame of books. And I'll do this using the pen tool. This does take some time, but it will save you in the long run to be precise. And once I've made my way around and closed off the selection, I'm gonna come up to the top, click selection, and then click OK. And to delete the part of the image within the selection, I'm gonna press backspace. You'll notice that we still have a selection being made, so to deselect, we're gonna press Command plus D on a Mac or Control plus D on Windows. Now I'm gonna resize this layer by pressing Command plus T on a Mac or Control plus T on a Windows, and I'm gonna drag the corners to resize. Now to work on the layer with the self-portrait. And again, the first thing I want to do is to remove the background. So I'm gonna come down here and press this button, select subject. So now that I've made a selection around myself, I actually want to select the background. So I'm going to inverse the selection so that I'm selecting everything other than me. And I'll press backspace to delete that selection. Just resizing myself to fit within the book frame. So I wanted to duplicate the book frame to make it look like there were loads more books than I actually had. I actually shot the same books twice, but on the second time round, I switched the light into the other side so that if I horizontally flip the image, it will make it look like a whole new stack of books. But the most important thing is that the lighting still matches. So now that I flipped it, I'm going to remove the background again, similar to the first time, but this time I'm actually gonna use the quick selection tool. I'm gonna click and drag my cursor over the part of the image that I want to select. This method is a lot less precise and I want to remove some of the parts of the selection that have been made. I do this by holding down the option key and clicking the parts that I want to deselect and I'm now happy with the selection, so I'm gonna press backspace to delete the selection. And now to quickly align it with the other books. As you can see for both stacks of book, we have the light on the left-hand side and the shadows on the right. Now I'm gonna add in some more books using Photoshop's generative fill. So I'm gonna make sure that the top layer is highlighted in my layers tab, and with the rectangular marquee tool, I'm gonna to make a selection around the part of the image that I want to work with. This box will appear, so I'm gonna click Generative Fill and type in my prompt, add more books, and then click Generate. Photoshop will create a new layer and give you three options per generation. If you don't get what you're looking for, just generate again. So let's generate some more books around the rest of the image. On my Layers tab to the right, you'll see these new Generative Fill layers. Once I'm happy with how it all looks, I like to merge these layers so that they all become one layer to work with. And like I said, it's good to be organized, so I'm just gonna rename that layer. Now, time to add the library background image. I generated this image in Adobe Firefly. Again, another great application to play around with AI and image generation. This is the background layer, so I'm gonna drag this down so that it is behind me. And I'm gonna quickly resize to match the scale and height of the rest of the image. So I want to motivate the light on the back of my neck, so I'm going to use Generative Fill to generate an old lamp in the background of this library image. So again, we'll come up here and select the rectangular marquee tool, and then I will select an area around where I want that lamp to be generated. And as you can see, this is very much trial and error. I like the lampshades being generated to some of these images, so I'm gonna update the prompt to generate more of them. Cool, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And just merging that generative fill layer with the background layer. 
and then just to line up that lamp with the light on the back of my neck. The next thing to do is to match the colors of the library with the other layers in the image. I can do this by creating a hue and saturation adjustment to that background layer. All I'm gonna do is make it slightly warmer and less saturated. And then I'll use the curves adjustment to make the background slightly darker. And I'm just gonna repeat this process for the rest of the layers. Now that everything is matching, I'm going to add some shadows in to add more depth to the image as at the moment it's looking quite flat. So I'm going to create a new layer above the background layer and then select the gradient tool. To find this, you'll want to hover over the bucket paint tool and click and hold to reveal the drop down menu. Then select the gradient tool. Over here at the top, you want to select the gradient with the transparent background. And of course, I'm making sure that I have the color black selected for the shadows. So I'm adding more shadows to the opposite side of where I've generated that light in the background. And now that this background image is looking more dynamic, I want to do the same thing and add shadows to myself. The next step is a very useful technique. What I'm gonna do is highlight the layer and make a selection around the subject. The select subject didn't select everything that I wanted it to, so I'm gonna use the quick selection tool to add more to my selection. And in the bottom right corner over here, you can create a layer mask with that selection. Having this layer mask essentially locks in that selection for that layer. So the next step that I'm gonna do is create a layer above. I'm gonna right click and create clipping mask. We have now made a layer that only affects the selection you originally made on the layer below. So for example, if I take a paintbrush and paint across the canvas, you'll see that it only affects the part with me in it even without a selection being made. So now that we've done that and we have this clipping mask, if we take the gradient tool again and add in the shadows, it should only add in the shadows on me and nothing else. So here is a before and after. Now we're gonna use the same clipping mask technique for the inside tower of books. So again, I'm going to make a selection around the tower of books, create a layer mask, Add a new layer above and create a clipping mask. And I'm going to do the same thing again with the gradient tool. So now that this is all coming together, the next thing that I want to do is add in some falling books. Again, I'm going to use the pen tool to work my way around the book and select it. So once I've made that selection, I click the inverse button to select the inverse, which in this case is the background, and click backspace. And I did the same technique for the rest of the books. So now that I'm happy with the position of the books, I'm just going to move these layers down as three of them are behind me in the image. So they need to go below me in the layers tab, and one is in front, so that needs to go above me. And similar to the previous layers, I'm gonna color them using the hue and saturation adjustment. And then using that clipping mask technique, I'm gonna add the shadows. This top layer is looking a bit too vibrant for me. So again, I'm gonna make a couple of tweaks using the hue and saturation adjustment. I want these books to seem like they're falling and not just floating. So I'm gonna add some motion blur to them. I'm gonna make sure that the book layer is selected and add the motion blur. All I have to do is choose the blur distance and the direction. And then repeat for the rest of the books. Now a couple of finishing touches. I'm adding some smoke and particles because I don't like the image to look too sharp and clean. I'm gonna place this smoke layer between the tower of books and me. And then switch the blending mode of this layer to screen to get rid of that black background. To make the smoke look less intense, I'm gonna lower the opacity as I want it to look more like a haze. And I'll do the same with some particles over the whole image. The final, final touch is to add some vignette using the trusty gradient fill from each corner. 
And there you have it. That is how I put this whole image together using Photoshop. I hope you were able to follow along and most importantly, learn a few tips. I use these techniques on almost everything that I do within Photoshop, so I hope you find them as useful as I do. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below.